improvisation for y'all. So what's going to happen is we are going to be doing open scenes for you guys, so just creating scenes on the spot. But first what we're going to do is play a little game to inspire us, to kind of get our mental juices flowing. So this game is called Objection. The Cheap Shots are going to step forward. They are going to posit something. I'm going to say it's either true or false by using the words sustained or overruled. And then once we're into the long form, there's a couple of things we might be doing that I want to explain to you. So when we think a scene is done, somebody is just going to come across and swipe the scene. That means an entire change up of what's going on. If maybe a conversation happens like, I killed your dad. Oh, I remember you killing my dad. It was the most gruesome thing. Let's see that. So the two clap means let's see that. And it's going to go a little something like, I'm the oldest man in the city now. I'm turning you old. I want you to suffer. I'm the incarnation of Father Time. <laughs> so that'll be a <laughs> So we can jump forward, jump back. We can pretty much do whatever we want with time. Um, we've got a big power on that. And then the last thing is the singular clap. So if I'm out here and I'm saying, this is the greatest party I've ever been to. There's only one streamer hanging from a ceiling and the room is empty. So something like that, with the one club, we can change up what's going on in the scene. So just wanted to let you guys know what's a little bit going through our heads. And without further ado, we'll get started with objection. So can we get a one word suggestion? Spiders, sure. Spiders, I heard spiders. Spiders aren't scary. Spiders are the one thing keeping this world together. Have you heard of a web? Spiders invented that. <laughs> spiders are smart critters, okay? And every time you step on one... Objection! Spiders get extremely upset when they're called critters. Sustained. <laughs> For eons, people have been referring to spiders as critters. Like that's some blanket statement that we can just apply to all animals in the animal kingdom. But spiders are different, because spiders are really made from little particles of love <laughs> that are... <laughs> Just join together in the bottom of like a of a uh, you know a, uh, a chocolate. Objection. The animal kingdom is not a kingdom; it's a family. <laughs> the animal kingdom is really a family. Here you got you, you got you got Papa Lion, right? You know he's taking care. He's taking care. He's making sure everyone's doing the thing they're supposed to do. The mother lion is in charge. Don't <laughs> You do not mess with the mother lion. You come near her cubs, she's going to kill you. <laughs> That's what happens when you mess with the mother lion. In fact, one of the most common instances among lions is when other animals approach their watering hole, such as wildebeest or hyenas or anything else that might make a nice... Lions don't drink water. <laughs> lions live on air. <laughs> Every single documentary you've seen shows lions eating things, but they only spit it out later. That's just to assert their dominance. <laughs> lions are, are... Objection. Dominance cannot be asserted. It's natural. And <laughs> <laughs> things that are dominant are born that way. There's no asserting dominance in any one situation. If a person is born dominant, then they are a dominant person. It's a dominant gene inside of them. If a person is not dominant, they're born without the dominant gene. And then they just live their whole life as a very passive, sort of slug-like creature that kind of slips its way all over the ground and says things like... Objection. Sometimes slugs turns into horses. <laughs> We're all very familiar with... Uh, at certain times, slugs, the, the less dominant things, the recessive things, can turn into great big horses and stride across the plains in great dominant strides, which they take using their dominant feet. My point here is that transformations Objection. are... There's no such thing as feet. <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing as feet. People for generations have been labeling this sort of thing at the end of our legs as a foot or plural's feet, but in reality, it's just more leg. <laughs> it's just all, it's the same thing. We, we make this like distinction. Your leg is just more body. <laughs> the 
people have been labeling this thing on the, bottom, on the bottom of their bodies as legs for all this time, but it's really just more body. And really the body is just more mind, and the mind is just more atoms, and the atoms is just more universe. So we're all just one big universe. of this, Minnie. Okay. You can't just rehearse. You have to make it up as you go along. Are you saying I should just go out there cold to this World Series of Jazz Hands competition? Coach, this is unorthodox. It's crazy. It might just work. <laughs> Studying doesn't always mean we're actually going to study, but <laughs> I thought we'd at least talk first. You're not paying enough attention to me. Oh God, <laughs> Jesus! All right. Uh, uh, well, what do you what do you want? Like uh, some yarn? Your yarn? Is that what you want? Yeah. Oh, is that is that really? No. <laughs> um, do you want? Do you want me to pay more attention to you and, and not bring over all these other younger, more attractive cats who drink 1% milk? There's a giant book on the table called Anatomy of Cats, A Practical Guide. Oh. Is that what you want? Are you jealous, Stephen? Are you jealous, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, the cat is here. Welcome. That was a private conversation. Oh, Stephen, I don't think you understand. <laughs> Nothing is private when I'm around. I am the party. I am the light. I am the cat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tom, catch. Hey. <laughs> oh, shit, Tom ate the arm. <laughs> That cat's cool. I'm wild, motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, Robbie, I've been looking over your business proposal. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty good. Hey, you come a long way, kid. You know that? Oh, Steve. Thanks, Scott. That means a lot. I mean, you know, I'm just watching you over, you know, over your shoulder. You know, I. I think we share the same cubicle. It's not hard. <laughs> you know, I, I when, when I had the when I had the stool and I couldn't turn around, that was just killing me. When I got that office chair, when we stole that office chair, <laughs> let's see that. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh, fuck! Those are the guards. Okay, okay. Maybe we just if we just both sit down on it, then, then maybe they'll think it it, it belongs to us. Ready? One, two. Turn around, see what you're doing, learn from you. Education. That's what we need in this company. Yeah, well, ever since Voss, you know, he, he had us do all the, the, you know, the new formatting, you know, it's just, 
It's all streamlined. It's all, there's no process. It's yeah. just product. He got into that weird mindset, you know? He's like, everything has to be the same. You know, like, you, your project's just an extension of the idea. <laughs> you heard that? He keeps saying that to me. Hello, Steven. <laughs> Hello, Steven. Boss. Boss. <laughs> they called us all Steven. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck's Steven? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, we're part of Steven. Yeah, well, you know, did, did you look in the mail? No, I haven't yet. Well, when you do, you'll find your new ID cards. It says Steven on it, doesn't it? Yeah, you're not Scott anymore. <laughs> Listen, man, I know you came into this business years ago as Scott, and you were the man. You were the man with all the ideas going through the process. You were going through it all. I brought you up. I brought everybody else up. Hey, you're right. I should be running this place. <laughs> Mary, I, it wasn't even my turn to play! Carl, it will be your turn to play when you are the one who gets thrown in jail first! If you get us a jailbreak, then you're entirely welcome to be the one making funny faces at the guards. But until then, I will keep you. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, it's fucking wrong. <laughs> Mary, it's just, it's just boring back here. You go in there, and you think about it next time you decide to eat glue. <laughs> always wanted to say it when you were working on your puppet, but I couldn't in real life. I had to hear in your imagination. <laughs> Larry! <laughs> this isn't going to work out. Ronald, are you dumping me in your own fantasy? about us getting together? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, this is really an emotional turn here at the Puppeteering International Competition. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out for Mary and Ronald, who happen to be the puppeteers. <laughs> hey, hey, um, Mary. Yeah, Ron? Do you think maybe we should just Drop this pretense and talk like normal adults again. <laughs> A quick audience poll has said that no, you shouldn't. <laughs> America has spoken. You never did the dishes. You didn't respect me in bed. <laughs> you bitch. I'll take you down. <laughs> This isn't as effectual on my actual, like, emotional state as I thought it would be. Ron, if you watch the strings, you're gonna break them. Shut up, you bitch! Oh, 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 God! Oh, oh, actually, this is sort of erotic, actually. <laughs> Too. 
here are Mary and Harold, the world's renowned puppeteers. <laughs> we uh, were just. Uh, Craig, Craig, it's, it's Ronald. It's Ronald. You, I grilled you on this before the show. It's Ronald. Yeah, it's Ronald. I know, I know. <laughs> we'll, let it, we'll let him slide. You never should have fired me. I'm sorry, by now you should be seeing a banner right under my breastplate that is showing that it is indeed Harold, not Ronald. <laughs> There's a breast. Uh, um, a, a banner right under his breastplate that says it is indeed Harold, not Ronald. And the original announcer had gotten it wrong. There's also uh, a big banner in front of the podium which he's standing on that says, The Morning News with Larry the Knight. <laughs> now we all remember the very metaphysical experience that went on when the puppeteers became the puppets and the puppets were very much so a reflection of the relationship between the two of them. <laughs> what was going on at the time? I'm dying to know when, when all of the strings were intertwining in so many different ways. <laughs> Ronald, I mean, I mean, Harold, you, you want to tell him? Um, uh, yeah. I, uh, oh, we're not using the mics. Um, well, we were kind of going through a real rough patch. I just lost my job as a security guard at Stevens Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Let's see that. <laughs> Yo, let's take this chair. They're not gonna miss another one, right? <laughs> let's just take them all. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck you guys! What? Oh, all the chairs! Red! 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 Oh shit, we're totally getting fired for this! Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we were on sort of shaky ground in our marriage as well. We've, uh, we've been trying to support ourselves with my artisan's salary. You see, I make the puppets we use. It's a very fine craft. She doesn't get paid a lot doing it, though. I mean, like nothing. It's my passion. I know, I know. We can't eat passion, though, Mary. <laughs> Seems like there is some strife, and you are. Um, I, I, I hear, Mary, that you are you are looking everywhere you can for materials for making the puppets. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about uh, what sort of recycled products you've been using lately with your most recent puppets? Yes, thank you. Actually, lately, I've been finding graffiti wherever I can and incorporating it into my puppets. Or uh, if I just kind of see something, I might take it and put it in. <laughs> like my toothbrush, <laughs> for example. <laughs> or my hairbrush. Or my brush that I use for my horse. <laughs> Speaking of brushes, don't even bother brushing your finger over the remote control. <laughs> we'll be right back with more from Marion. <laughs> told you it wasn't. <laughs> Fuck those judges, Minnie. What you did out there... Just be careful! <laughs> that was art, Minnie. Uh, how should I hold this? I <laughs> that was art, Minnie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just call me Eric. <laughs> I was like you once. People told me what to do. And now, I'm a coach who tells people to not listen to people who tell people what to do. <laughs> oh, that was a kind thing you were doing. <laughs> Your development has been so fast. <laughs> I mean, I think we've worked through our issues and can finally divulge our secret during the competition. 
for you. So we are going to get a fairy tale, yeah. Um, for example, Snow White, but not Snow White, because I just said that. So um, we're going to get a fairy tale from you guys. What was that? It's probably Canadian. Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows that. <laughs> OK, yes, we'll go over to the elves and the shoemaker. Um, can, you please, can you come up here? We're going to find out. Can you please come up here, sir? <laughs> <laughs> but but to pay them back, he makes tiny little clothing so they wear rags, not knowing that if he gives them clothing, then they can escape. And once they put on the clothing, they leave, and, and no one ever sees them again. But he's okay, because he has enough money now to make food. <laughs> mild complication here, which is that each of these socks will step forward and ask a question to the audience, and that the answer to that question will inform the way that they tell this story. So I think you will get it once we do it. So um, will you guys step forward and ask questions? Um, if you were to go to the Humane Society, what kind of animal would you pick out to adopt? Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, what was that? Kangaroo. Kangaroo. If you were an old style of music, which one would you be? Wait. Swing. Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Grunt. Oh. Grunt. 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 No way. Grunt. <laughs> Grunt. Um, a body part to cut off. Head. <laughs> Do you have a favorite jazz age author? going to review. Um, Katie, what is your word? Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Play. Play. The uh, uh, grudge. <laughs> Head. Head. <laughs> that's Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah, that's Scott Fitzgerald. So we're going to tell you the story of the elf and the shoemaker, the elves and the shoemaker, um, using those suggestions. Keep socks warm up. <laughs> Keep socks warm down. And begin. Of the last shoelace. He remembered back two years ago the last time that happened, and he wanted to get down a little bit on the floor and search around for real materials because he was all out, but he couldn't find anything. It was the end of his business. He was out. He was out of the game. He couldn't get back in. He was going to be broke. <laughs> this destitute shoemaker who'd moved to New York City with a dream and a woman <laughs> and a picture in his pocket. <laughs> Knew he'd have to find another way to make a living. And so, he went away. He went to sleep, in fact, hoping in the morning he would have a new idea, a new way to get out of his kind of fault that he was in, mate. No one. <laughs> Great! 
sold as many shoes as he could before heading down to the pier to stare. <laughs> to stare off into the water and uh, recollect on what happened, happened to him. So he slid back home and decided to go back to sleep, hoping that maybe in the morning it'd be more shoes at his door. And as he slept, he went from level three to level four, and back from level four up to level three. And his sleep cycles went around and around. When he woke up, his eyelids opened. Which is happened to do sometimes when you go to sleep. Your eyelids are open in the morning. So he went down to a shoemaking shop, and what could he find but more shoes? More shoes! More shoes! They were everywhere, and he slid right out of his house and slid into the market and slid all his shoes on other people's feet, so he made a killing. A killing indeed. It was like he had just run someone over due to a very complicated love triangle of sorts. He screamed as he ran someone over. But it was too good to be true. Truth was what he was searching for. He searched with his eyes, all of his senses really, except for his touch. <laughs> he didn't touch anything. But he did use his hands, except not to touch, to just feel the air around him. And he ended up sensing some very tiny people. Now he was groovy with the tiny people that he was not feeling, but really had a good sense of with his other senses. He uh, began to realize that there were actually little tiny fucky elves making all of his shoes. He hid in the closet and watched them as they worked. There were these little girl elves putting things together with their gnarled hands. He sensed the temperature of the closet increasing every second. He knew it was time for him to reveal himself before he recognized the three girl elves. They were the manifestations of his desire to meet the woman. <laughs> of his dream. <laughs> Who would never exist because he's a shoemaker. <laughs> and he realized some of those poor, poor elves had only rags for clothes. So he decided that he would make them the fanciest, swingiest suits. So he, they would be get down on the ground and boogie. <laughs> <laughs> He made these clothes and went to sleep again. And as he was asleep, he was not aware, but at that time, the elves got down on the ground and boogied. <laughs> they boogied so long and so hard that they escaped their mystical entrapments, which had kept them in the shoemaker's factory. They fled out of the house, vowing never to return. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Shoemaker woke up the next day and found no more shoes. Well, that was okay, because he had made plenty of money with all the other shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and so both the elves and the shoemaker got exactly what they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Send it on fire. Either of those. But thank you guys very